What the hell? What the hell are you doing here? Your car's not fast enough? No. No, he says. All right, so stay tuned and we're gonna start working on this one here. I believe he's got some uh, PR coils for us to install. Sweet. What we're working with today is the Precision Raceworks external coil upgrade. Now I can't remember exactly if these are considered smart or dead coils, but essentially when you have a pre-LCI N54 engine running off the MSD80 DME, what can end up happening if you have a coil fail, the voltage can transfer back into the DME and fry your MOSFETs. So ideally you would want something like this that's going to sit, if I remember correctly, they're gonna sit something like this up and over here. So we might need to trim his engine cover just a little bit. But with these, if for some reason you have a misfire, it's not gonna fry your DME, you're not gonna cook your MOSFETs. And at the same token, these ones do produce a significant amount more energy than the factory coils. You could go Delphi, you could go Bosch, Eldor, whatever you want. I swear by these, I'm putting them on my N54, expecting to make quite a bit of power. And also with these, you can run a larger gap than you can with other coils. For these coils, of course, we're putting them on the tried, tested and true N54 engine. They also do work for the N55 and potentially, I believe, for the S55. They do end up mounting pretty similar between the N54 and the 55. You can get multiple brackets. You got one here where it sits under the engine cover. Some people don't like that because they want to see them. I mean, they are pretty cool on their own. The bracket, I believe here, bolts to the fuel rail. I'm pretty sure it's either the fuel rail or the intake manifold. And the other one that I have for my one series bolts to the port injection. It's a pretty sweet upgrade. They're relatively inexpensive. When it comes to best bang for your buck, I'd say definitely go with like a Precision Raceworks coil kit. And uh, how much were these, Emila? 500. 500 Canadian pesos in town and they look new. And I'll actually show you over here quick. They had two revisions. So this being the second revision came with these plug and play adapters and it's in really nice shape. Okay, so first thing to do is take off the engine cover. As you can see here, this one was trimmed off for the BMS oil catch can. We're gonna, we're gonna trim this off too, because no, that's not nice and <laughs> that gets caught. So what happens sometimes is uh, on the cylinder six fuel rail, it'll get caught and then this will get pulled up. So we're gonna trim it nice for them. So for here, you can see these bolts here. There's gonna be four of them up and throughout. There's one there. I believe there's one just underneath here and two more. Now this rail, I'm fairly certain it's meant to mount like this. So to keep our sanity, we're gonna need to move that plastic piece there and hopefully it's gonna clear for the PR coils. These connectors are an absolute pain. So right here you need to press really hard, sometimes to break whatever grit and corrosion's in there and then give it the lightest tug just on the bottom of the loop here. And for simplicity's sake, we're gonna move all of the harness up and out of the way so that we can access the bolts easier. For the 5 Series, you have this one big chunky plastic thing that houses the power wire and the main harness. This might end up getting in the way, so we're gonna see if it does. If it does not, then we're gonna replace it. But if it does, we'll have to uh, come up with a plan B. Now usually, with a 1 Series and a 3 Series, you can take this harness and zip tie it up and on the strut bar really nice like this, and then you don't end up having issues. Um, Did that just come off? No, it wasn't even in. So, this PCV heater is meant to be in that hole there, and I think uh, he would appreciate not sucking dust into his rear turbo, so we will also fix that for him. Before we do, anything else to make sure nothing falls in there. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the norm when people work on cars and bring them here. Now that everything's out of the way, we're gonna test fit it properly this time. 
Now for here you can see how each one of these bolts up or aligns to one of the bolts. So this one here, let me peel it all back for you. Up here for the high side, you've got your high side silicone hose and the low side. So the one that we just put in there, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to rotate it so that this hose is at least 45 degrees up. So ideally the two of them stacked on top of one another in behind here, they can rest on the coils after, but this we're gonna need to rotate. So twisting it helps. What we're gonna do to just keep the hoses kind of out of the way is zip tie it together here. We can see that gave an extra few inches. So I guess now we can start by picking again these plastic tabs off, rotating them up and start by installing the coils. So these 11 mils, all you're gonna do is you're gonna crack each one of them. Now they're not torqued very, very tight, but they can be a little bit annoying to get to. What you're basically trying to do is slide it in behind these bolts. Now I'm gonna see, I might need to actually pull them out further. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt the bracket down and I think it's gonna be easiest to mount the coils after. I thought about putting them on beforehand, but getting to those 11 mils after is gonna be a nightmare. So we're gonna do it like this. Now once you get it in place and you've confirmed that it's on each one of the studs, you can generally tighten the outside bolts just to snug it up. Now these brackets specifically, I'm sure there's a torque sequence, but if you use common sense, just use spark plug tight. It's a steel bolt into an aluminum cylinder head. Just needs to be a little bit snug, nothing crazy. For the coils, you've got these 10.9 grade stainless bolts, so they're not gonna end up rusting like any others. Essentially, they just go through there and it's just gonna hold it right to the bracket. And then afterwards, we'll show you how these all get connected. As always, things can be a bit of a pain so we went to go install coil number four, and as you can see, it's hitting this uh, lovely little post here. Now I do have a spare manifold, so I did confirm all this really is for is just to hold the factory air box. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my hacksaw, or sawzall, whatever, and I'm gonna try and lob it off as nicely as I can without hitting anything, and uh, go from there. Ready? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm not sure. Good. There's in the hole. See, I knew the entire time. Well, he sh himself. Please, no. Please, no. I'm gonna file it down just because I want it to look a little bit cleaner. Now, as long as you don't end up hitting the runners, you'll be fine, so you don't need to worry about this ruining the integrity of the manifold itself. This will be fine. Is it gonna fit? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, with like five mil to spare. And you don't see the portion that we uh, clearanced. Yeah, we'll, we'll call it that, clearanced. All right, now that we uh, have the coils mounted, what you're basically going to need to do is pull this connector off. You're gonna pull a factory coil out with that satisfying click. Now for here, this is going to connect into here. Oh, I should do it the right way. Into here, you'll get a nice click. Now you can use a little bit of dielectric grease inside there. I tend to use it quite often. This will clip right into here. So that's gonna end up giving it its power. Now the majority of this you'll be able to tuck up and underneath. The boot itself, we're gonna put just a little bit of dielectric grease right on the inside, but it's gonna be mounted in here. And then we're gonna find out how we're gonna mount them here. So something like that. These are a little bit longer than they normally would be. So we'll find out which way ends up being the best, whether it's tucking it underneath there, up and over top, again, a little bit longer, so we'll try to make it as nice as we can. But of course, the engine cover is going to go back on, so I'm going to end up doing the six of them. We're going to see where we need to trim for the engine cover, just because these are going to end up sticking out. I'm fairly certain we're going to need to cut the entire side off of it, but we will uh, 
go from there. Now that we're done, these should work like OEM, but of course, anytime you screw around with anything to do with your vehicle, you always want to start it to make sure. And if you're me, it starts the first time, all the time. For these coils, the engine cover we tried to clearance it as best as we can. For this side to clear the coils, we ended up trimming it and we ended up taking out the foam portion. Now, this is gonna be a similar issue that I'm gonna run in on or into on my one series. What you can do is change this to an N55 engine cap, and then you don't need to worry about the flap and whatnot because it's sitting up maybe quarter inch, half inch. Otherwise, it's good to go. For these coils, you can code them with MHD. There is a check box, box or a flash option for PR coils. It does end up, I believe, increasing the dwell of the coils. Anyways, it gives it more power. They work just like factory, but of course, to maximize the benefits of these coils, check them in MHD or if you have a custom tune, tell your tuner. That's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. See you on the next one. Right, say bye. Take care. See you next time. <laughs> okay. Now he has to GTFO.